Hi, my name is Dr. Enzo Foucault from Natal, Brazil. I'm an Oncology Service Fellow at Wills High Institute in Philadelphia. And this video is going to talk about interterior chemotherapy for retinoblastoma. IAC stands for intra-arterial chemotherapy. This is a way that we can deliver chemotherapy to the eye by entering the arterial system of the body. So IAC is intra-arterial chemo. Uh, practically, it's delivering the chemotherapeutic agent directly to the tumor uh, by driving up a microcatheter all the way endovascularly through the groin, through the femoral artery, all the way up to the carotid artery, and then threading a small microcatheter in the ophthalmic artery, which is the artery that goes to the eye and then uh, injecting over half an hour chemotherapy directly uh, to the tumor. Uh, this way, you're using much smaller dose of chemotherapy compared to the systemic chemo because you're delivering it directly to your target. Well, primary treatment means the first treatment a child receives for treatment of retinoblastoma. We use IAC as primary treatment when a child comes in with unilateral retino retinoblastoma, opposite eye clear, one eye involved. And it's usually those eyes that have moderate or advanced disease. We classify retinoblastoma into five groups based on how advanced the disease, disease is. Groups A, B, C, D, and E in increasing advancement. And we use intraarterial chemotherapy for eyes that have group C, and eyes that have group D, rarely group E. Why don't we use it for groups A or B? Because we can treat them with less invasive measures. We don't need to go to intraarterial chemotherapy for minor retinoblastoma. The answers are, the role is great, and has it replaced external beam? Yes. So intraarterial chemotherapy as I previously mentioned, can be used as a primary treatment, as the first treatment a child receives. It can also be used for recurrence, which we would call secondary treatment. This is after an eye fails standard intravenous chemotherapy, which we call chemoreduction, or after an eye fails laser, cryotherapy, plaque radiotherapy, or, or any of the other uh, treatments. Well, for unilateral disease, we tend to treat most of the children with intraarterial chemotherapy. I would estimate 80 to 85 percent of unilateral retinoblastoma receives intraarterial chemotherapy as primary treatment. For bilateral disease, we tend to start with intravenous chemotherapy, that is chemoreduction. If they fail intravenous chemotherapy with recurrence in the eye of retinoblastoma, then we will use intraarterial targeted chemotherapy. I think there's two subsets of children who does best. Uh, the first subset are those with unilateral disease, groups C or early group D. They do best. Their eye is salvaged with usually two or three doses of intraarterial chemotherapy. But not only is their eye salvaged, their life is salvaged, and they avoid multiple other treatments. Just two or three doses of chemotherapy cures these children. It's, a, it's remarkable. The other group that does very well with the IAC are those that have failed chemo reduction. Again, these are eyes or children with eyes filled with retinoblastoma who are facing removal of the eye or external beam. So the two challenging steps are first to get access to the groin and sometimes in small babies that are uh, less than a month old, uh, you can have difficulty accessing the groin and then uh, some patients will have uh, an acute angle of the takeoff of the ophthalmic artery from the carotid or a 360 loop, so this would be also challenging to categorize. It depends. Uh, it depends on the age of the patient. It depends on how easy is the access uh, to the groin and then how easy is the access to the ophthalmic artery, but it can take any way from uh, 45 minutes to a couple of hours. 
So the baby looks completely normal except for the fact that sometimes they can have a little bit of swelling uh, on the eyelids and the area around the eye. I like to think of the complications as immediate and long term. And the immediate complications can be mild or severe. So the immediate complications include mild things like upper eyelid edema or dysmotility, inability to move the eye, or redness on the forehead, or eyelash loss. And we see these occasionally, maybe 10% of our patients have immediate side effects or complications, and these tend to resolve over time. There are severe immediate complications. The severe complications are retinal vascular obstruction or ophthalmic artery obstruction. Because the IAC is delivered into the ophthalmic artery, it can cause toxicity to the endothelium. And studies have shown that it actually causes a whitening to the retina in studies that were performed on monkeys receiving IAC. And this whitening to the retina can cause vascular occlusion and immediate loss of vision. I warn all families that the child may wake up with no vision after IAC. We hardly see that complication anymore. Why don't we see that? Because we are very careful how we cannulate the ophthalmic artery just to the ostium. Now, the long-term complications, we don't really know yet. But one long-term complication is the choroid tends to get a bit atrophic many months or years after IAC. Nobody knows what the long-term complications might be systemically with this medication. The medication we and others tend to use is called melphalan, and melphalan can have a toxic effect on the bone marrow. We are cautiously watching. We have had no children develop bone marrow abnormalities following IAC. So the parents' main concern um, for IAC is um, the uh, risk of uh, death or stroke. And we normally tell them that so far we haven't had any cases, fortunately. Uh, it's very exciting. It's opening the horizons uh, to us, interventional radiologists and neurosurgeons. I'm a neurosurgeon. I'm never, I used to never be involved in retinoblastoma, and here I am now. I'm involved in, in a really ocular uh, disease. Uh, it's a promising technique, and I think it's a revolution on how we're treating uh, retinoblastoma. I'm ecstatic. This has been a revolutionary alternative for children with retinoblastoma. Children who would have otherwise had their eyes removed are now having the eyes saved with intraarterial chemotherapy, or those who would have otherwise lost vision or had complications from external beam radiation now have very few complications with intraarterial chemotherapy. This has totally changed how we manage children with retinoblastoma. I give credit to our colleagues around the world who have worked alongside with us in investigating this very important new therapy for retinoblastoma. In summary, a new chapter has been written with the introduction of intraarterial chemotherapy as a treatment for retinoblastoma. It has proven to be a powerful treatment with good tumor control and minimal systemic complication. The exact role of IAC awaits further definition.